First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Yahweh, been the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashim, meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai, been the name of Yahweh's only begotten Son, and our Lord and Savior, also who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashim Rakakwadash, meaning in the name of the Holy Spirit. Dabana to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to those for elect that scattered abroad to the four corners of the earth, which are you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, and Shalom to you speckled birds and your Israelite foreigners that scatter out in other nations that look like the other nations, but are in fact Israelites. And as you see from what I have pulled up on here on the screen, you know, this lesson is going into, you know, uh, the famine that's about to hit this world hard, all right? You know, because right now we are facing, you know, a, a historic food crisis that the world hasn't seen, you know, in years. All right. You know, and uh, ultimately, you know, this is all taking place first and foremost because it's Bible prophecy. All right. Yeah. How about Shemia was shy, set things up to be this way. All right. You know, but, you know, under that, you know, this is uh, taking place because uh, of the war, you know, between the Russia and Russia and Ukraine. All right. You know, this is taking place because, you know, it's pretty much a trickle down effect. You know, this war is affecting, you know, uh, you know, the, the like different, um, you know, the supply chain and whatnot, so to speak, you know. And, you know, the longer that this war, you know, goes on, you know, the the worst this food crisis is going to get, you know, and it's not going to get better. Because we are living in prophetic times, all right? You know, we are without a shadow of a doubt at the end, all right? You know? And famine, you know, is a prophecy, you know, something that Yahweh Shah said would happen before his coming, all right? You know, so uh, through the Spirit, you know, I'm going to get into this article and then, um, you know, bring out some scriptures to show you how, you know, famine, you know, lack of food, you know, is an end time prophecy, all right? So, Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters are edified. So, this is CNN Business, and it says Russia, Russia's war in Ukraine sparked a historic food crisis. It's not over, all right? You know, and it's not going to get better, all right? And it says, grain is once again leaving Ukrainian ports. The price of fertilizer is falling sharp, sharply. Billions of dollars in aid has been mo mobilized. Yet the world is still in, in the grips of the worst food crisis in modern history. All right. You know, so this is the worst food crisis in modern history. You know, let's continue. As Russia's war in Ukraine shakes global agricultural systems already grappling with the effects of extreme weather uh, and the pandemic. Market conditions may have improved in recent months, but experts do not expect imminent relief that means more pain for vulnerable communities already struggling with hunger it also boosts the risk of starvation and famine in countries as Salaki and countries countries such as somalia which is contending with what the united nations describes as a catastrophic food emergency all right you know and the scriptures talk about how you know uh tribulation is going to come upon the whole earth all right so this famine that's coming this is going to be global all right because you have a lot of jakes out there thinking that you know maybe if i flee america i'll be all right hell no all right you know if you are marked for judgment best believe judgment is going to find you all right so it's best to just make sure that you're in the good graces of your how about shimmy i was shy instead of having to you know get a passport and flee to another country where you still are going to be destroyed if you mark marked for if you're marked for judgment all right you know, so it's no fleeing. You know, this globe, this is going to be a global famine, and this tribulation that's coming is going to be global. All right, but um, let's continue. All the major causes of the food crisis are still with us. Conflict. You know the uh, C19. I can't say that word. You know because you know uh, the algorithm and whatnot. Climate change, high fuel prices. Kerry Fowler, the U.S. Special Envoy for Global Food Secretary, told CNN, I do think we have to prepare for 2023 being a rough year. All right. You know, 2023 is going to be a year from hell. And they said that already, you know, and the elders, apostles, 
you know, already been saying that, you know, 2023, you know, it's all hell is going to be breaking loose. All right. You know, major things are finna happen this year. All right. Let's continue. The issue is on the agenda as government and business leaders head to the to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland this week. It will it will vie for attention as attendees discuss topics ranging ranging from energy costs and maintaining global security to artificial intelligence and demographic shifts. All right. You know, you already know what that artificial artificial intelligence is all about. All right. You know, these people are getting ready to implement the B system, you know, but that's a topic for another time. David Beasley, head of the UN's World Food Program, tweeted that the elite gathering comes at a critical time. His agency received 14 billion in 2022, an unprecedented sum that included more than 7 billion from the United States that helped it deliver Salaki. That helped it deliver food and assistance to about 160 million people. But high food prices mean that funding can't go as far. And Russia's war continues to generate volatility. More work also needs to be done to boost supplies of food in countries with greater needs. The ranks of food insecure, the ranks of the food insecure are growing fast, faster than our ability to provide humanitarian assistance. Fowler said, "We can't get out of this crisis by supplying food aid." You know, so these people are starting, you know, to worry. All right, because they saying that, you know, this food crisis is getting bad, you know. All right, it says the highest food prices on record before Russia invaded Ukraine. The price of food was already at its high at its highest level in a decade due to scrambled supply chains and extreme weather events such as the worst drought in almost a century in central and southern Brazil. Record prices for neutral gas, a key input to make nitrogen-based fertilizers had also become a nightmare for farmers. Then came the war. Ukraine normally supplies about 40 million metric tons of grain to the global market every year and is the world's top exporter of sunflower oil, all right? So, you know, this whole everything that's going on is strategic, all right? You know, Yahweh Shemel Shai is, you know, setting everything up to where he's setting everything in order you know to where it needs to be all right you know the chess pieces are being set in place you know and this war in ukraine you know just made things more worse you know and it's not over you know it's one thing after another when you think things are getting better boom yahweh shai sends something else all right you know it's, it's gonna keep it's gonna continue to be that way you know uh let's continue Together with Russia, it accounted for about one quarter of global wheat exports in 2019 as Russian troops blockaded the country's ports and stained food system was dealt another shock. This one even harder to bear. The Ukraine crisis had, had, has had this ongoing negative impact on world, on world food prices and even more volatility said abby maxman ceo of oxfam america the supply chains and how they flow to place to places like east africa and the horn of africa are taking big hits all right so everybody is getting hit up because of this you know this food crisis you know and this war that's going on between you know russia and ukraine all right that drove the food price index developed by the un's food and agricultural organization to its highest annual level on records dating back to 2005, rising more than 14% compared to 2021. In 2022, the number of people grappling with acute food insecurity, meaning their access to food, was so restricted that it threatened their lives and livelihoods, shot up to 345 million from 135 million in 2019. There have been some signs of improvement. The index has dropped for nine consecutive months and its December value was below that of one year ago. A big factor is the sharp decline of the price of vegetable oils. Supplies are high and demand is down as the economy slows and recession fears take hold. 
all right you know as i you know i made a lesson about this yesterday you know a recession is on the rise all right a major recession to be exact all right the deal to restart ukraine's food exports via the black sea allowed it to ship more than 12 million metric tons of grain and other food and other foodstuffs through the beginning of december and the falling price of energy has helped bring down the cost of fertilizer uh at the moment things are trending in the right direction said jonathan haynes senior analysis at grow intelligence a research forum but concerns remain especially given that food prices appear to have stabilized at high levels fertilizer remains expensive on historical basis and farmers have been using less to conserve costs that could reduce crop yields and upcoming harvest china's rapid rollback of coronavirus restrictions means the country's demand for agricultural products could suddenly skyrocket lifting prices again plus ukrainian and u.s officials have said russia is slow walking inspections of ship loads of ship loaded ships loaded with grain at black sea ports leading to backups and costly delays russia is not assisting in uh avaliate elevating the food crisis and slowing down the grain inspe in inspections fowler said all right so uh i'm gonna read a little bit more of this you know i'm gonna just get into the scriptures you know because it's a pretty long article and whatnot you know matter of fact i'm right at the end so i might as well just finish it out so uh it says unpredictable and extreme weather also poses a risk after the eight warmest years on record the past 12 months saw unprecedented heat in europe devastating flooding in pakistan dryness in the u.s corn belt and se severe drought in south america linked to the la nina phenomenon we've been experiencing a lot of climate disruptions haynes said but it's big it's a big unknown all right and like i said y'all about shimmy all shy he's doing all this all right you know he's setting the chess pieces to where they need to be you know because we are in a time of judgment you know and jacob's trouble is right around the corner all right and one thing that comes with jacob's trouble is famine you know so this food crisis that you know the world is seeing right now it's not gonna get better you know you can hope for it all you want but you know it's not you know but um let's continue the far-reaching cost of war up prevail and the glue slaki and the glo global food market has added to the ranks of poor and hungry people around the world and those monitoring monitoring conditions are worried about the future we really are in a moment where we're seeing increasing poverty because of because of all these shocks particularly in africa said usaid global food crisis coordinator dina esposito who is traveling with fowler in maui and in zambia this week governments still stung by the pandemic have less bandwidth to provide assistance especially given the rapid run-up in interest rates which mandates heftier debt payments and the strong and the strong u.s dollar <laughs> yeah right strong you know this dollar is finna collapse any day now you know but you know they could keep hoping if they want which makes importing food more expensive agricultural prices and local currency have gone up 142 percent in maui and 120 120 percent in zambia since the start of 2020 according to an an, an analysis from grow intelligence all right, so I'm going to read these last, you know, few couple paragraphs and uh, that'll be it. Meanwhile, countries already on the brink, such as drought stricken Somalia, have been pushed further to the edge. Aid groups have estimated that more than 90 percent of wheat consumed in the country comes from Russia and Ukraine. Oxfam's Maximin, who traveled there in, De in September, said disruptions to, s to food supplies were obvious in markets last summer a senior nutrition manager at a clinic run by the international rescue committee and i'm not even finna butcher that word you know but um 
told CNN that its caseload had spiked 80% in one month and that it was seeing a staggering 265% increase in severe malnutrition in children under the age of five. It's the compounding effects that's hurting those least responsible for what's happening the most, Maxman said, all right? So, you know, that's that on this whole uh, article. And as you see, you know, there's a global food crisis on the rise, all right? You know, first and foremost, because Yahweh Bashima was shy, you know, is, you know, stirring things up, all right? You know, he's controlling this war between, you know, Russia and Ukraine, all right? You know? Because you'll have some people say that, you know, this uh, this famine that's being created, you know, that's taking place, this food crisis, you know, it's all man-made, so on and so forth, you know. And honestly, hey, you could, if you look at it that way, it, it is what it is. But ultimately, you know, according to the scriptures, you know, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Yahweh Shai, all right? You know, meaning that, you know, Yahweh Shai controls everybody, you know, so... Nothing is necessarily, you know, created by man. All right. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai just simply uses people to carry out his plans. All right. You know, so as I said, you know, I want to read this article. Now I'm going to get into the scriptures. All right. Because famine is, you know, at the door. All right. And many people are going to die from starvation in these days to come. All right. Because this global food crisis is going to get worse than what you see it right now. So to start off. I want to get second Edris chapter nine and verse one. And it says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time dil diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, verse two, then shalt thou understand that it is the t very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world, which he made. All right. So, you know, uh, we are told you know the scriptures tell us you know to measure the times diligently all right you know pay attention to what's going on in the world you know and when we paying attention to you know things that's taking place you know we see when we seeing that these prophecies are being fulfilled we understand that you know it's you know the time is coming when you know Yahweh Bashim is about to visit the earth where you know these different plagues and you know these uh the judgment that's coming to the coming to this place all right so um, let's continue verse three therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people and the world verse four then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the from the days that were before thee even from the beginning for like as all that is made in the world had the beginning and an end and the end is manifest right you know in the end of this time you know this uh this so-called world you know you know, it's being made manifest right now. All right. Seeing everything that's taking place, you know, you know, uh, the disciples asked you, how was I, you know, what would be the signs of his coming in the end of the world? You know, and uh, the signs that he said, you know, was uh, wars and rumors of wars, uproars among the people and famine. All right. You know, I'm a, uh, and I'm going to get that, you know, in just a second. So, uh, Salakia, verse six. And it says, even so, the times also the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. All right. So, you know, when we see these things taking place, we understand that, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is finna visit the earth with great judgment. All right. You know, and it also means that, you know, it's coming close to the time when Yahweh Shai is going to come back. So um, from here, let's get Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> and let's start at verse one. All right. And it says, and Yahweh went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Verse two. And Yahweh said unto them, see ye not all these things. Verily I say unto you, there should not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Verse three. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? All right. So the disciples, they're asking Yahweh Shai, you know, what will be the signs of his coming and, and the end of the world? All right. And this is what Yahweh Shai is finna say. And it says, And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take, ye, take heed that no man deceive you. 
Verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. All right. You have many bug outs that's popping up, you know, around the world on social media saying that, you know, they're the savior. All right. You know, verse six. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. All right. And we're seeing that right now. You know, every day you turn on the news is something, you know, taking place, you know, between these other between these different countries. All right. You know, wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. All right. You know, even though we seeing all these things taking place, you know, the end is not yet. You know, this is only the beginning. Verse seven, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. All right. You know, the, the whole point of this lesson, you know, and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All right. You know, and when we just read Second Edris, you know, chapter nine, you know, it talks about how when we see these things, you know, of earthquakes and uproars amongst the people, then we understand that this is the time that, you know, the highest will begin to visit this place. All right. So um, let's continue. Verse eight, Salakia. Yeah, verse eight. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. All right. So, you know, we seeing all these things taking place, but, you know, that it doesn't mean that it's the end. You know, this is just the beginning of sorrows. And those sorrows is known as, you know, the great tribulation, you know, and Jacob's trouble. All right. You know, we are right at the door. You know, Jacob's trouble is right at the door. All right. So, you know, uh, let's go ahead and get second address chapter six right quick. You know, I'm gonna get a few precepts from there. So uh, this is second address chapter six. And let's start at verse 23 and it says um no let's start at verse 22 and it says and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty all right you know and so it's going it's, it's going to come a time when you know your grocery stores your local grocery stores you know your schnooks shop and save walmarts you know your kmart so on and so forth you know your walgreens you know it's going to come a time when those stores are going to appear unsown all right you know they're going to be empty you know you're not going to see you're not going to be able to go to the grocery store you know and get you know groceries so on and so forth all right um uh, verse 24 at that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein the springs of the fountains shall stand still and in three hours they shall not run all right verse 25 Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and sell and see my salvation and the end of your world. All right. So, you know, if you escape these things, you know, you famine, you know, and, uh, you know, friends fighting against each other, you know, uproars amongst people, you know, uh, you're going to see, you know, the salvation or right? you're going to receive that salvation. All right. So from here, you know, I want to get uh, second address chapter 15. And let's read verse 19, all right? And it says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, and shall and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread, and for great tribulation, all right? You know, so it's going to come a time when, you know, food is going to be so scarce to the point where people are going to be running up in each other's houses, you know, trying to see what they got. You know searching for their next meal all right you know so we are at the beginning stages of that you know because this food crisis is not going to get better you know and when you go to the grocery store right now you know you're saying you know uh certain things that you know you will be able to get you know you're not able to get it you know shelves are starting to appear empty so on and so forth you know it's becoming a lot harder to get food you know and especially with the inflation that's going on all right you know, so we're seeing these things taking place right before our eyes. All right. So uh, I want to get one last scripture, you know, I'm going to uh, close this lesson out. All right. You know, this lesson wasn't meant to be all that long. You know, just giving another update of what's going on in the world. All right. So uh, let's get second Edward chapter 16 and I'm going to read verse 22. And it says, uh, for many of them. 
Salaki, yeah, it says, For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy, all right? So, you know, major famine is coming to the earth, all right? You know, it says many that dwell upon the earth shall perish of the famine, all right? That's how bad this famine, you know, this food crisis is finna get, all right? Now, say if you do, you know, you escape this famine, you know, you uh, you don't die from the hunger, all right? If you're a two-third, you know, a wicked two-third, you know, you uh, Jake, you you so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American Indian, all right? If you escape that, you know, you're going to perish by the sword, all right? And the modern-day sword, you know, uh, is uh, guns or and whatnot, you know, and whatever other weapons that Esau Edom has, all right? You're going to perish that way, you know? And uh, pretty much, you know, in a nutshell, all this is coming upon the earth as judgment for the wicked. All right. You know, these other nations and also you Israelites, you know, the, the ones of you that don't want to hearken unto this word. All right. You know, so seeing that everything is taking place in the earth right now, you know, this global food crisis that's taking place, you know, that should get some that should put some fire under your behind to get right with your whole body. Shimei was shy while you still had a chance. All right. You know, these things that's written in the scriptures is not, you know, just there just for the hell of it all right you know these are prophecies that's clearly unfolding right before our eyes all right you know so that should be enough for you to get your act in order you know be on your p's and q's you know examine yourself daily all right because the days are evil as the scripture says all right so you know lord willing this lesson was edifying to you brothers and you sisters out there and as always i want to give all praises honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweshai, Bahashem Rakakwadash for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honest to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you brothers is out there pushing this truth and sincerity. Shalom.